before and after listening it, recite all your religious protection spell or verses. Do whatever you do for the protection from evil beings. I am not suggesting that the evil being from this story will definitely haunt you, but they say precaution is better than cure, right? Do not listen to this story at night and not when you are alone. Amy's elder sister, whom she affectionately calls Appa, recently returned from London due to her mother-in-law's illness. Despite her brother-in-law Timur's efforts to rush back after learning about his mother's condition, he arrived a bit late due to work commitments. However, he was able to meet his mother before she peacefully passed away the next morning. Timur makes efforts to persuade his dad to join him in London, but his dad declines. Concerned about leaving his father alone, Timur decides that Appa and their kids will stay in Pakistan while he goes back to London to handle personal matters. After six months, he'll return to run the family business, which includes his father's four gold shops in the city. Appa chose to live independently in a home just a five-minute walk from her father-in-law's place, allowing her the freedom to live life on her own terms. This decision was made for safety reasons, as neither her husband nor her father-in-law wanted her to live alone in the country. With this arrangement, she enjoys the benefits of proximity while maintaining her desired lifestyle. Despite heartfelt efforts from Amy's parents to convince her to live with us, Appa declined due to her naturally assertive demeanor and some issues with Amy's sister-in-law. Instead, her children spent their days with their grandfather, sharing meals and staying until bedtime. Appa pursued her passion for gardening, creating a stunning rose garden in one corner of her lawn. Appa has two lovely daughters, Sarah and Miriam, aged 10 and 12 years, respectively. Miriam, Amy's niece and a 7th class student, is very close to her and they both share many secrets, spending a lot of quality time together. However, after almost two months since they settled in their new home, Miriam's health suddenly deteriorated. She experienced weight loss and had dark circles under her eyes. Appa thought it might be due to the environmental change, having lived in London before, and the new surroundings. The doctor conducted tests, which turned out to be clear, prescribing medicines along with a diet of fruits and milk. Concerned about her niece's health, she noticed changes in her behavior and feared something might be troubling her. Despite receiving chocolates and toys from Timor, her illness persisted. Even regular medicine intake didn't alleviate her condition. Upon visiting an eye specialist, she was prescribed milder spectacles for her eyesight. However, her fear and emptiness persisted, prompting Appa to request Timur's immediate return home. Earlier a cheerful and social child, Miriam's health decline was a cause for concern. Concerned about her niece Miriam's health, she noticed a change in her behavior, she seemed fearful and withdrawn. Timur attributed her illness to distance and sent gifts, but her condition persisted. Regular medicines didn't improve her headaches, so Appa took her to an eye specialist who prescribed milder spectacles. Worried, Appa requested Timur to visit home soon. In this touching tale, Sarah confides in her mother, Appa, about her sister Miriam's nighttime behavior. Worried, Appa tries to bring the sisters together in her bedroom, but Miriam insists on returning to her own room. Sarah's fear of Miriam's unusual behavior adds to the concern. Seeking professional help, Appa consults a psychiatrist who diagnoses Miriam with depression, likely triggered by changes in her environment, school, and social circle. Reassured that with regular treatment and medication, Miriam will recover in due time. Miriam's treatment continued for almost five months after returning from London. Suddenly, strange events started happening in the house, items would go missing and reappear, all watches would stop simultaneously and reset to the correct time, and food would disappear. For instance, Appa put chicken under the sink and when she returned, it was nowhere to be found. The mysterious occurrences puzzled everyone. In this scenario, Amy's mother started to believe that these matters might involve supernatural beings. However, 
She decided not to share this with Appa as she didn't want to add more worry while Appa was alone without her husband's support. Additionally, Appa had a bit of skepticism about such things. During the winter school vacations, Amy was invited by her sister, Appa, to stay at her home for a week. Excited to spend time with her nieces, Amy arrived, but to her surprise, Miriam seemed distant and cold, retreating to her room after a brief greeting. The following morning, Amy decided to make a special breakfast for the kids, who were still asleep. She woke up Sarah first and invited her for breakfast, then proceeded to Miriam's room to gently wake her up and include her in the family gathering. Appa shared that Miriam has been behaving similarly with everyone lately, spending most of her time alone in her room. As the days unfold, Amy hoped to bridge the gap with Miriam and make these winter vacations a memorable and joyous time for all of us. She stood still by the window, unresponsive as Amy called out to her. When she approached, Amy was shocked, thinking she was looking at lifeless eyes. Suddenly, she looked at Amy, smiled, and her eyes sparkled with life. She said, Amy, auntie, go ahead, I'll be down in two minutes, dine to eat your special omelette. Despite the strange feeling, Amy went downstairs. After breakfast, Amy suggested watching a movie, but Miriam excused herself due to a headache and went to the bedroom. Amy and Sarah proceeded to the TV lounge and began watching the movie. During the movie, her foot accidentally knocked over a water bottle and it rolled under the sofa. When the movie ended, Amy went to retrieve the bottle but was shocked to find it back by my foot. Sarah nonchalantly remarked, Don't worry, Amy, strange things have been happening since Miriam fell ill. Amy suddenly realized that how Miriam knew about breakfast and the special omelette even though she was in her room the whole time. On Appa's insistence, Amy extended her stay for a few more days, making it her tenth day in the house. Nothing extraordinary happened, and Miriam's treatment continued. Most of the time, she stayed in her room, but occasionally she sat with us, silently listening. Conversation was minimal, but the atmosphere felt comforting. Two days later, Amy, Sarah, and Miriam were at home while Appa attended her friend's wedding. At around 11 p.m., Amy felt an eerie coldness and sensed an impending danger. She noticed a shadow on the window and heard the door open and close. Thinking it was Miriam, she went outside, but the door was locked from the inside. Amy bravely stepped into the lawn, trying to understand what was happening. In the freezing cold, Amy spotted Miriam near the rose garden, talking to an unseen presence with eerie hand gestures. Miriam without proper attire, looked contorted, almost monstrous. As Amy approached, she felt an inexplicable force stopping her in her tracks. Fear overwhelmed her, and despite the chilling weather, she broke into a sweat. Miriam's wild, bloodshot eyes locked onto Amy's, but miraculously, she survived the encounter. With a powerful shove, Miriam sent Amy flying, leaving her screaming and eventually fainting near the main gate. Amy wakes up at home after a strong fever and explains everything to Appa and her mother. Appa gets emotional and asks for their help. Miriam's innocent face now scares Amy due to the events of that night. Time will returns, and what seemed like a psychiatric situation turns into something supernatural. Struggling with unexplained changes and worsening health, Miriam's family sought help from various healers and doctors. However, no one could identify the cause of her scratch marks, increased appetite, and aggression. She even distanced herself from school, spending days gazing out the window in a trance-like state. In a quiet suburban home, strange happenings left the family puzzled and concerned. Sarah repeatedly discovered trash and dry leaves mysteriously appearing in her wardrobe. The unsettling incidents didn't stop there, as their cherished family photo frame unexpectedly crashed to the ground one day. Appa had a beautifully adorned aquarium in the drawing room housing 25 rare and exquisite species of fish. 
However, a dreadful morning brought devastating news. All the fish were found dead, with grotesque injuries akin to an attack by a fierce predator. The aquarium was unharmed, the lid intact, and the room undisturbed, leaving everyone baffled about the mysterious cause of the tragedy. The loss of her beloved fish took a toll on Appa, rendering her deeply distressed, unable to eat for days, and shedding tears for her cherished companions. Appa's family started hearing a crying baby in the house, though there was none, and both sides of their home were empty plots. Behind their house were bushes with stray animals, while a road ran in front of their home with three houses across. Appa's father-in-law, unaware of the situation, was kept in the dark due to his old age. One evening, he saw a huge black dog sitting on the 15-foot boundary wall and its shadow strangely resembled that of a woman. When the dog noticed him, it barked and vanished inside the house along with the woman's shadow. Appa's father-in-law gets worried and pounds the door, seeking his missing dog. Timor questions his father about the dog's disappearance, expressing disbelief at the dog climbing the tall boundary wall unaided. The father insists he saw it happen. Timor narrates the incident to his father, who listens silently. Later, the father calls Miriam, recites Quranic verses, and promises to visit the next day before leaving. Amy visited Appa's house after a gap of five months, still feeling fearful after witnessing Miriam that night. She tried to avoid encountering Miriam, who seemed to understand her fear and kept her distance. During lunch, Amy's grandfather introduced his old friend Akbar, who had a bright and beautiful face, as he was there for Miriam's spiritual treatment. Akbar spent time with Miriam, discussing her hobbies and more. Later, he examined the house while quietly reciting something and occasionally sniffing the air. When he reached the little rose garden, he abruptly stopped and bent down to closely inspect the spot where Amy had seen Miriam the chilling night. He returned with a serious expression but didn't say anything. Later, Taimo revealed that the house was built on an old Indian burial ground where Hindus cremated their dead. The ashes of a deceased Hindu woman were left behind during the partition. When Appa dug the ground for the rose garden, it disturbed the woman's spirit, causing trouble for the residents to make them leave the house. In the midst of the confusion surrounding Miriam's condition and the entity witnessed, it was discovered that the haunting spirit was not Miriam but that of a Hindu woman. Akbar uncle, due to his age and health, couldn't perform the required healing processes, so Nawaz, another spiritual healer, was sought for help. However, Nawaz was currently out of town, dealing with personal matters in a neighboring province, and there was no fixed date for his return. Miriam's health continued to deteriorate, and she frequently attempted to leave home at night. However, the gatekeeper's timely intervention prevented her from doing so. To help her sleep at night, she was given a sleeping pill, and her brother Timor would tie her foot with a rope while she slept. During the day, she would experience trance-like states and engage in self-harm, tearing her clothes and trying to escape the house naked. Appa and Sarah would chase after her, covering her with a blanket during these episodes as she became verbally abusive. In order to provide constant support, Appa hired a full-time maid who remained attentive to Miriam and informed Appa when such attacks occurred. The situation was challenging and required utmost care and attention for Miriam's well-being. One morning, they were startled to find a big vulture inside their lounge, staring at them menacingly. Surprisingly, all the windows were shut and vultures were not known to be in or around the city. Time or by called the gatekeeper using his bedroom intercom to open the gate from outside, hoping the vulture would fly away. However, the gatekeeper informed him that there were more vultures in the lawn and one of them seemed to be guarding the gate, warning him not to approach. Timur's father was also called but was unable to enter the house due to the vulture's presence. The family stayed in their rooms without eating due to a vulture blocking the kitchen and refusing to move. This frightened Sarah, causing her to develop a high fever. Appa tried to cool her down with cold patches, but the fever worsened. By 4 p.m., Sarah nearly fainted from the fever. 
Meanwhile, Miriam's mate called on the intercom, informing Appa that Miriam was experiencing another episode of madness. Appa rushed to Miriam's room only to witness a horrifying scene. 